This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It's an absolute pleasure to be down at Sean Bailey's office today. Now, obviously, the majority of people we interview are directly involved in boxing. I know Sean's a very uh, big boxing fan, but you're not directly involved in the sport. You're in politics. Do you want to just introduce yourself to the IFL viewers? So my name's Sean Bailey. I'm running to be Mayor of London, but just to say... I've always been a boxing fan. I've also boxed as well. Uh, I, I wouldn't say quite a bit. I'm not that good a boxer, but I've really enjoyed it. And I'm just about to go back and start boxing with, with, um, in the secret gym because it's the secret gym, London Bridge. It's my way of keeping fit. And plus, I just love the sport. It's great fun. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned uh, it, it's a way to keep fit. And, uh, you know, credit to anyone who gets in the ring, but don't have to get in the ring necessarily. Um, you know, I'm sure you're spreading message to kids in London that uh, to get down to gyms, even to just keep fit, active and uh, keep your mind healthy. So look, here's the reason I'm interested in boxing at this level, on this political level. How do we get in touch with kids who are close to being involved in trouble, who are in it? You've got to give them something to do. And where boxing is really special, you effectively have men in your area who are often a local hero, who have a lot to teach young kids, who can pull them away from crime, who will give them something to do. And we all know boxing gives you transferable skills, transferable attitude. That's why I'm interested in boxing now, because we can get a lot of young people away from crime if we can get them into something as productive as boxing. Mm. Before we go more in depth into that, I just want to get your background really. Um, I'm guessing you've always lived in London? I'm a Londoner born and bred. I'm originally from Labrick Grove, West London boy. I currently now live all the way east in Romford, but I've lived all over London like most people. Um, I, got, I got into sport and got into boxing because as a young kid growing up, I needed something to do. And my mum was, she knew that if I didn't have something to do, you know, I could end up somewhere she didn't want me to. So I did athletics, I did gymnastics, I did boxing, I did all sorts. And that's that's where I come to youth work. Youth work is great, but it has to have a, um, there has to be a camaraderie there. It has to be something more than just biscuits and table tennis. And I think this is a good way of doing it. How did you get involved in politics? I used to run a youth project. So what happens is I've been a youth worker 25 plus years. I used to always work with the kids on the, sh on the road. So I was what they call detached. So I used to roam about the street, speak to people, try to get them into work, get them away from drugs. Then what I started to do was basically carry around job applications and stuff from the job, from the job office in my rucksack and hand them out and try to get some of the older boys work and stuff. And from there, I gently built up and got into, basically I set up my own charity and did a lot of work with young people locally. And just because of where I was in Labrick Grove, Goldburn Road area, Port Better Road, you ended up dealing with a lot of kids that if they didn't, if they didn't get support, they could go the wrong way. So it just meant that I dealt with a lot of kids who were closer to being in trouble than most people would. Now, you've mentioned that you grew up in London. Um, have you noticed a change from when you were young till now? Have you, have you noticed a, a shift in, in culture, in, in the way people are? There's definitely a shift in culture. Only yesterday I was in Stratford talking to a group of young girls about how they feel about crime, do they feel safe? And some of the things they said to me were so different to how we grew up. Because when I grew up, we'd have straighteners. So you and a fella fell out you get in a group, you'd have a punch up and if you lost, you walked away and you accepted it. Now that doesn't happen. People come with a knife to use, to use the young person's term that someone used to be in a, you get shanked, Sean. And he said, people are looking to shank you before anything even happened. Whereas in our day, it was a fight. People were much more respect to, respecting towards adults. So my day, you'd never talk, you'd never say madness to someone's mum, let's say. You wouldn't come to their house. You'd wait till you saw them on the street. It's, it's different now. Crime feels much more visceral. There's, it's just a statistical fact. There's much more knives and guns involved. And there's definitely been a change. And it's also the culture. That's why I think boxing, in and of itself, is an important tool to challenge the culture of young people now. Why do you think that change has come about? So we have a sort of a false thing of what it is to be a big man. I personally think it's a bit of prison mentality come out onto the street. But why I think boxing is important, because boxing has respect on the street, doesn't it? You're respected if you're a boxer. It's a respectable thing to do. And if you're saying to people, come and join me in the gym, and it's not about being a professional boxer. It's not even about the ring, really. It's about the, the training. It's about somewhere to be. It's about the fitness, the health, and all that kind of stuff. You're able to say to young people, Use your energy positively, be around positive people, and people can help you with all kinds of things. I speak to Glenn McCrory the other day, and it's, it's strange because he's older than the young people now, obviously, but he was talking about the changes it meant for him. He came from a very poor background, it gave him focus, it gave him a future, and he was saying that's something he'd like to put on to young people now for them to understand, and I think that's really powerful. Mm. 
So in mentioning that change, do you think there's enough people uh, in high positions in society uh, that are addressing the fact that sport and specifically boxing can help within communities and uh, we can kind of get uh, the old culture back where if you fall out with someone, as you said, you take it privately, maybe you do it in the boxing gym um, and you do it without any weapons, etc. We're going to come on to knife crime, etc. and gun crime. You take that out, but do you think there's enough people addressing that issue in society? The thing about sports and stuff... It's like this, isn't it? The reason I'm interested in boxing clubs because boxing clubs have always found a way to survive regardless of what's going on in politics. And my only job as, as a politician is to help those clubs survive from a financial point of view, from a sort of legislation point of view, and just from a visibility point of view. Like, I come from Romford. Our local boxing club, The Art of Boxing, is something that I'm always speaking to people about just so they can get members because they do absolutely great work. It's, it's really interesting speaking to Spence Ferron and him talking about how his take on boxing and, and his influence is to help young people look at, you know, don't slide off, don't become involved with the drama kings and queens because his a visibility from boxing gives him, gives him skin in the game. They respect him. He's able to have that conversation. And that's the kind of thing boxing can do. When you talk about people high up, they don't understand boxing, do they? Half of them are trying to ban it. The other half do, do, don't, don't understand sports in general. And what I'm trying to say is sports in general and boxing in particular can do something. And the other thing I'd say as well, there's very few communities like the boxing community. People watching this now will know the boxing community has something special. The fact that the, you have this channel, the fact that you have people like, you know, Spencer, the, se the Secret Gym, those kind of people, you know, out, William, Richard Williams talk about, out in the, in, in the public arena, out in our community arena, the whole time speaking and talking on behalf of young people and trying to push them up is special. And boxing is very strong on that. I'm going to pick up on something you said there, that there's been calls to ban boxing. Uh, Eddie Hearn has been very vocal about this in saying um, people, as you said, don't understand what kind of positive impact boxing can have. Obviously, um, everything has its negatives. We've seen tragedies this week, uh, last week actually, with two deaths in the ring. And, and obviously, it is different to other sports <coughs> where the aim is to go and, and hurt someone. But... It brings about so many positives. Um, it brings, as you said, communities together. It can teach discipline. Um, it's, it's a special sport in that way. And, yeah, what do you kind of say to, to people uh, in government or who have got a, 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 an important say in society who are calling for the end of boxing and to remove it from our society? I think they have to be fair about it. Let's be fair. Many sports are dangerous. Most sports are dangerous. I know more people have broke their leg playing football than, than boxing. So you have to bear all those, those things in mind. And also, let's separate out professional boxing and what boxing does as a community activity, a fitness and a health activity. So the first thing is, we'd always want to make professional boxing as safe as possible. And I remember speaking to Michael Watson, who I saw only a few weeks ago. He's not calling for, the, for boxing to be banned. And he's someone who has a very special relationship with what can go wrong. He's saying, let's make boxing as safe as possible. And we can do that. And that's for professional boxers to do. But I'm talking about the community end of boxing. The end of the, 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 the side of boxing that says to young people, come and join something bigger than you. Come and keep fit. Come and make friends with people in your area. And one of the real big things that I've really noticed about boxing, the kids who box, girls and boys, stop fighting in other places. So if, you look, if you're talking about danger, boxing reduces the danger to a community, not increases it. I think that's very well said, and uh, a lot of people could, should take note of that. Um, I do want to address uh, knife crime and gun crime and violence generally in London. There's, there's a general feeling that there's a, there's a rise uh, in violence, especially with knife crime, within London at the moment and use. Can you kind of uh, address whether that, that's true, false? I'm sure you kind of know the statistics. I mean, statistically, it's true. There's been quite a steep rise in knife crime. I think the problem is how do we address it? And it's why you keep hearing me talk about culture. It's why you hear me talk about the power of boxing and the boxing community and the messages that are sent every day by this community. I remember going to, this, to, to the Art of Boxing in Romford and just seeing the way that the coaches talk to the young people, the positive effect they're having on their outlook in life, you can't quantify that. That is golden stuff, and we mustn't lose that, because that's how we defeat knife crime. At one end, of course, there's the, the police and the criminal aspect of it, and, and getting the police and backing the police, of course. But the other end is actually steering our children away from it, and that's the most powerful end. And again, I go back to my theme. The boxing community has something special to offer because of the respect 
effect that boxing has in the communities. And many of the communities facing the big criminal challenge, yeah, boxing is something that they respect. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're in that community, I come from Lambert Grove, I live in Romford, communities that are almost as far apart as you could be in London, all respect boxing. I remember growing up, Mr. AK up there on the Harrow Road was a massive youth goings on. Everybody went there at some point. 99% of people never got any near, near the ring, but they got into the training. They had somewhere to be. They had an adult, a responsible adult who was monitoring their progress. And it's those kind of things that really keep young people safe. Again, that's why the boxing community has something special to offer. Okay, so you've mentioned the fact that there has been a steep rise in knife crime. You can kind of confirm that. It's not just a, a vague feeling. No. Uh, a lot of people um, are very sort of uh, keen to, to put the blame on the current mayor, Sadiq Khan. Uh, do, you, do you feel that's harsh? Uh, do you feel he has some sort of responsibility for, for what's going on at the moment? Let's be clear. Sadiq Khan didn't cause any crime. But what he's responsible for is solving that crime and he hasn't taken responsibility. If you come to the boys I grew up with and tell them it's 10 years before the knife crime goes away, they'll arm up. They'll think, well, I need to be safe in that 10 year period. What he should be saying is, I will take charge of this. I will be judged on, on sorting this issue out. He needs to go to the police and ask them to do better and new things as well. He needs to go to communities and say, I will support your your, your vision for your children. So as, as, as a parent myself, all I want for my children is to be safe, have some access to education. What he shouldn't do is turn it into a political football. What he shouldn't do is blame everybody else. He is the commissioner of police in London. He's responsible for crime in London. He needs to take responsibility for it. And he'd find if he did that, that would be a big step in the right direction. We will not get a resolution to crime while he keeps blaming it on other people. And... and I had to say to a young person the other day, every time you hear the words, it's cuts, it's somebody else's fault, that's him dodging his responsibility. He must take responsibility for this. I suppose you've half answered my next question, but if you were the current mayor, what would you do to solve uh, the steep uh, sort of rise in knife crime at the moment within London? It's three things. The first thing is, the enforcement end. We need more police on the street, we need more detectives, we need scan and search, not just stop and search. We need to get people who are involved in madness, yeah, off the street. If you grow up in a poor area and you spend your whole time dodging criminals, what chance do you have of going to school? What chance do you have of attending boxing club and, 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 and doing something positive? So that's one end. The other end as well is we need to say to our young people, what is it you need? Yeah, you need education. Let's push them in education, especially good education. Let's do stuff around youth zones and activities. And that's the kind of thing you'll hear me talk about all the time. I come from a youth work background. I know the power of youth work as long as it's focused and is looking to deliver a future. But the other part is I deliver a challenge to London and it's why I want to speak to the boxing community. Let's step up. I always go on about boxing community. I always talk about I'm a member of the army cadets. I talk about schools and all those things because we need to challenge our children about their behaviour. We need to challenge them about what we could provide for them. And I remember speaking to Spencer and him saying, yeah, he spoke to some boys on the street and he was surprised at their level of aggression. And we need to challenge that because some of the challenges around crime, which I think where the mayor and the current system have no understanding is some of those situations will only be solved in the community if we as adults step up and do that. That's why you'll always hear me talk about employment, activity for young people and parents. We need to back parents so they understand what, what pressures their children are under. OK, so you mentioned parents, employment, and what was the other one? Youth activity. Youth activity. We, so I've got a big policy around youth zone. So working with a, 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 um, a charity called Onside, who, by the way, provide a lot of boxing because they, they bring the equipment and the rings so that the local boxing clubs can come in there and provide services to their young people. But providing those big youth zones, I've started with five, I've found the money, I'll keep going and keep finding the money so that we can get young people into a positive environment where they're future is being built they're not just getting biscuits and playing table tennis they're doing something about their future the deep thing as well is how do we make sure that the poorest communities in london are close to employment so that's what do we do with the adult education budget we're about to get and what do we do with the um the apprenticeship budget as well making it easier for businesses to take on apprenticeship apprentices that's the kind of thing we want to do because ultimately if you have a future and you can feed your family you will behave anyway you'll be you'll have a much greater resistance against people trying to pull you down into crime etc you talked about scan and search now stop and search uh, as it is comes under heavy criticism uh, from some uh, aspects of society 
So if you employed scan and search, which, which is, I'm guessing, going to be more heavier than just stop and search, um, do you think you'll face sort of a, a backlash for, for introducing that? I'd say no. So if we talk about scan and search, scan and search should only ever stop you if you had something illegal in your pocket. So straight away we're in a different conversation. If you've got a borer, if, if you've got a knife, yeah, I want someone to find you. Yeah, and if you ask anybody that across London, they want you found. So I think that's a different, I just, I, I don't accept that argument. What I'm saying to people is the reason I want to bring scan and search in, it just ups the numbers of, of searches we can do with, without upping the hassle end of it. You're not being hassled. If you've got nothing, you're not being stopped. But everybody, you and I, want people who are armed, we want those weapons off, off the street. Stop and search, we're going to have to have more of it. But if there's a kicker here. How is that stop and search done? Yeah. When is it done? And, you know, what are we asking the police to do here? Because I spoke to a, 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 a mother who'd lost her child and she said she wished someone had stopped and searched the boy who'd stabbed her boy. So when people are saying things like that to you, you have to respond. But also on the other end, growing up, I know what it's like to be stopped and searched all the time. I've been stopped and searched so many times. I know what that's like. So I'll bring in a new system at how we supervise the police. I'll make sure the police get the correct training to deliver it in the right way. And the police already have body-worn cameras, which has changed the amount of complaints. So I remember um, Boris Johnson said, let's have these body-worn cameras to not only help the police, but more importantly, help communities so they have evidence around what's going on. So that's what I want to do. I'll, f I'll double down on the cameras, but I'll also look at the way we train the police. Back to the knife crime. Um, it's, it's a touchy subject, but there are people who say the blame is to put on a, a certain community, um, talking bluntly down to race. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people who say, look at the stats, it's got nothing to do with race, um, outside of London especially. But within London, there are a lot of people who say it is only one certain kind of a race who are causing this trouble. How, what do you kind of say to those people making them claims? There's a number of things I'd say, I think. Firstly, I'd say the scary thing about London's rise in crime now, things like robbery, burglary and rape are up. And they are terrifying to everybody, absolutely everybody. The notion that you can live in a community and be safe from crime, I think people are losing. I, I get that across London all the time when I, when I speak to people. When you focus in on knife crime, there is no doubt that young black boys are the major perpetrators, but also they're the major victims of that crime. So when I talk about culture and what boxing has to offer, when I talk about backing parents, when I talk about sorting out the police, that is to support that particular group of people. The group of people that I come from, I am a black man, I fully get it. And there's a tension there. Do we want to get keep getting stopped to search all the time or do we want our children to die? I definitely don't want my children to die. So we're going to have to do the work. But the idea that we own knife crime as, as a black community is wrong. Everybody's afraid of it. Um, the fact that we're the biggest victims mean that we'll be the biggest beneficiaries when it's sorted out, but everybody will benefit from my zero tolerance approach to crime and the fact that I think that much of dealing with crime isn't just about policing it's about the opportunities you can provide for young people moving forward I think that's very well put um you mentioned sort of the three solutions you had one of them was youth activities I'm sure that would involve boxing how much of a significant part do you think the sport of boxing can play in I'm not saying it's going to get rid of knife crime it's going to get rid of trouble but limiting it reducing it and helping it in the long term to kind of vanish from our society. Let, let me be clear. I did gymnastics for 22 years. I was in the army cadets for even longer. You know, technically I'm still a member now. When I talk about sport and activity, all of the sports and all of the activity can do it. I sit on the, I sit on the board of a charity that teaches young children how to play the violin, for instance. All of these things are important. The reason I'm speaking today to the boxing community because there's something particular that boxing can do. Right. When I grew up, the boxers in my era, in my in my area, were heroes. The boxers on television were heroes. So people like Hagler, I, I, I my uncle was a massive boxing fan. Hagler, Hearns, Roberto Duran, these are people you wanted to be. These were, and why that's important is because a lot of the people leading our children astray are very attractive people. They're saying all the wrong things in their music. They're saying all the wrong things on, on social media. So we need equally attractive characters to, to, to say the right things, to do the right things. And that's what the boxing community has done. The boxing community has always been doing the right things before it was popular to do the right things. So what we need to do is 
elevate that message. What we need to do is get young boxers out into the public arena so they can say, look, I come from where you come from. I'm not doing the things that you hear about. I'm doing other things as well. You know, I'm, I'm starting a business. I'm doing my boxing career. I'm trying to help people in my community not see themselves as victims, but move forward. That's why I say boxing has a big part to play just as an activity, but an even bigger part to play as helping us adjust the culture that is dragging so many of our young people down. Just lastly, uh, a few classic examples of uh, how beneficiary boxing is, is Dillian White, uh, Anthony Joshua, Richard React on, on a slightly smaller scale, I'm sure he's going to achieve big things. And I can name so many more just from London who have been involved in, in, in real trouble um, growing up within the city. Um, we all know the stories of, of Dillian White and Joshua and Richard React, as I said, um, and look where they are now. Um, so, as you said about role models and, and people you want to be, you want to be Joshua, you want to be Dylan White, whoever your, whoever your favourites are. Um, what kind of message do you think they should be doing? I know they've got busy lives, etc., with training and, and headlining pay-per-view shows, etc., but do you think uh, if... They might already, already do it, but what kind of message do you think the, the top guys of the sport should be giving to, to the young kids in the community? I would say to everyone, it's not just the top guys, it's not it's like people like Isaac Chamberlain, right up to, I don't know, Michael Watson, everybody should be giving a message that you are valuable. As a young Londoner, as a young person, you are valuable. You can have a future as well. The idea that being from, from sort of urban background means that you have to be street, you have to be a criminal, they need to fight that. And if I was to say there's one thing that boxing can give, boxers need to talk about their discipline. All boxers, you simply cannot be a professional boxer if you're not disciplined. That's a fact. And they need to say, look, this discipline for me has manifested itself in boxing, but your discipline could manifest itself in school, in university, in that career you want, in that company you want to start. They need to say that we mustn't view ourselves as victims. Yes, our start point is tough, but we can get above that. I mean, to become world champion in boxing isn't just about fighting. Who do you pick as your management what kind of contract are they building for you? You know, who's your training team? We need to have a conversation with our young people about boxes to show you, look, it's much more than just what happens in the ring. And you can be part of that. And even if you're not part of boxing directly, look at all the skills and the attitudes I have that have made me a successful boxer. That's what we need to do. Because I'm looking to people like Isaac Chamberlain to counter some of the, 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 the bad rapping that's going out, out there. You have people who are, who are preaching death and murder to our children. Okay, Isaac, you're a professional boxer. Or, you know, you, you are on the rise. I, I, I could see a belt, a big belt in your future. Talk to young people about how you're getting there, how you've had to go through the daily slog that they've got through, but you found a way to channel your energies and you happen to be very special at it. It's that kind of thing that I'm really after. Because I remember Glenn McCrory saying to me, he came from such a poor background, but he found that focus. You speak to F Spencer Fearon and he talks to you about how boxing broadened his mind to just to be involved in all kinds of anything from television presenting to back in small businesses. That's the kind of conversation we need to have. The words I would use, yeah, what boxing really means to me and, and, the, and the sentiment that boxers should be putting out is a disciplined hustle. I've never met a boxer who isn't also trying to do something else as well. It's that discipline and that hustle all in the same place. That's the message which you put putting out because it defends people from going down the easy route of getting involved in crime. All right, Sean Bailey, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Is there anything you'd like to add before we go? Again, I just want to issue my challenge to the boxing community. You're one of the, the biggest, strongest, most together communities in London try and help our young people especially boxers because I feel like boxing and everybody around it can speak to knife crime in a way that other other groups of people can't I think you can really make a real positive impact for Londoners and the whole country thank you Sean